The Yankees are up three in the bottom of the ninth. Clay Holmes is in for the save. This breakdown is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest 5G network. First pitch, a little sinker in, 97 miles per hour. It's raining in Baltimore. It's hot, humid, and raining. A slider. He has him 0-2, and then, oh, 97. It cuts into his head. Scary moment. Can't even imagine how scary that has to be, and then the pain that would ensue. Look at this. It was supposed to be another sinker, but it slipped out of his hand. It cuts instead. Pouring rain, boom, right in the ear hole. Super scary moment. That lady was scared. Her reaction is correct. If you look at the score, it's a save situation. It's the bottom of the ninth, and he's got him two strikes. It's not when you'd throw at a guy, and you don't want to throw at a guy's head anyway. So I think all parties agree it wasn't on purpose. There's still a lot of issues with it that the Orioles have, which is warranted. But Clay Holmes said he was trying to throw the sinker again, and the ball was slippery, and it just cut on him instead of sinking. So there's the overlay of what he's trying to do. And at the point of break, it just went... <laughs> Kept going instead of cutting. Now, here's the issue. The Yankees have hit the Orioles a ton this season, and a lot of the hit-by-pitches are up and in, which isn't good. And there's an old saying in baseball, if you can't pitch up and in, if you're not good enough to locate, then don't do it. Now, they do have some hit-by-pitches that are, you know, back foot sliders that are getting the feet. This is the Yankee strategy. They pitch inside to the Orioles lefties. They try to go up and in. This is what it looks like when they don't hit them. Sometimes they get swing and miss. Sometimes they get, I tried to swing and then I stopped. Sometimes it's the righties too, but mostly it's the lefties. But yeah, they're pitching inside to the Orioles a lot. On the other side, the Orioles have only hit the Yankees three times, and that one, if you want to count it, this one was scary because it hurt Judge, and we were scared he was going to get hurt, and then Glaber got hit. So only three times, the Yankees have hit the Orioles ten times, and besides Cole Irvin and a, a reliever, the Orioles don't pitch inside to the Yankees at all. This is all I could find, and it's pretty benign. And then even further, I looked up every team's up and in pitches to Baltimore's lefties and Toronto has the most and then the Yankees with six uh, up and into the righties the Yankees lead in that category four so they have the most up and in pitchers oh no they're tied with Toronto most up and in pitches to Baltimore Baltimore doesn't throw up and in to the Yankees or to anyone really so their their gripe is real and their player might be really hurt so it's a heated moment Hyde's pissed you can see him he glares at Clay Holmes right now, and I don't know if he's, you know, just he's upset that he got hit or he's upset because they were asking if he's okay and acting all nice about it. Hyde didn't like it at all. He turns to Clay Holmes and says, fuck you. You know, with a lot of, na fuck you. Or fuck you. Like that, you know? Upset about it. And he says it right there and then stares him down a little longer and Wells, the Yankees catcher, hears that. And he's like, what? <laughs> Shakes his head. What? Uh, looks at the dugout because I guess the dugout heard it. The umpire, who was all the way back there, he heard it or saw it. And so did the second baseman, Oswaldo Cabrera, who come in and like, hey, Clay, Clay, don't worry about it. 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 So now you've got Brandon Hyde, manager of the Orioles, defending his guys because they just got hit in the head and cursing out the Yankees pitcher. And then now you have all of the Yankees coaches defending their pitcher, saying it was an accident. Don't talk to our players like that, and cursing out Brendan Hyde. That's the catalyst. Meanwhile, we're getting a concussion test, and he did go on the seven-day concussion IL, so I hope he's okay and speedy recovery and no lingering effects. As they're walking him to the dugout, Hyde hears the Yankees' dugout chirping because they're saying, don't say F you to our player. You don't get to do that to our player. And you can see him say, you talking to me? Fuck you. Don't fucking talk to me. Tosses the batting helmet. Then he's going to start charging. Wellsy's trying to hold him back. The Yankees coaches come out hot. They're flying in heat. Everyone's like, fuck you. Don't fucking talk to my guy like that. You don't fucking talk to me. And then Freddie Gonzalez coach for the Orioles, he gets to the front lines and he gets his hands on the Yankees coach and his finger in his face, and no one likes that. Get out of my face! Get your finger out of my face! Freddy! 
Get Freddy! the fuck out of Freddy! my face. Freddy. Fuck you. Get out of my face. Fuck that. Fuck. Get out. Hey, get off me. Freddy. Get off. Freddy, hey. chill. Oh. Fuck Freddy, you. Freddy, chill. Get fuck out of my face. You can see Cole takes over and he's talking to him. He's like, hey, come on now. And he's got Cole wrapped up. And then he kind of gentle touches like Godfather's his face. You know, right here, he's got his jersey wrapped up. You can see his hand on Cole's chest. And Cole's like, come on, man. Come on. Hey, you know, wasn't on purpose. And then un ungrabs the jersey and goes pat on the shoulder, pat on the side of the head. Godfather. So maybe they have a relationship. And Cole calms Freddie down. He's like, it's right. And he pats him a little bit. And then... Good job by Cole there. Uh, Yankees coach is going crazy. The bullpens are sprinting out. And this guy on Baltimore, I don't know who that is. I apologize. It's blurry. But he looks over to his right and he's like, shit. Bullpen catcher? He's about to pass me? He's got his pads on? I'm that slow? I loved the situation DJ LeMay, you got himself put into because he's kind of a quiet guy. Not that talkative. Not that involved usually. He finds himself in the front lines. Real battering ram early on, all right? And then falls back and kind of says, all right, whatever. Like, I'll stay back. But then this uh, Orioles coach with the batting helmet on, first base coach, I'm guessing, he comes storming in, and I think he falls. I think right there he's on the ground. I think Judge is looking at him like, dude, you all right? You're on the ground. And then you can see LeMayu look at him and see that guy's on the ground. The next time they cut back to this scene, DJ's got him locked up like he grabbed him uh, out of the ground, saved him from the stampede aggressively, but saving him nonetheless. Coach is like, who's got me? What's going on? What is this? DJ's like, I got you. I get you. I'm getting you out of there, dude. Go back on your side. And DJ pushes him on his side. And then to thank DJ, you know, to make sure he didn't get stampeded, uh, he just gives him a little shove. And then DJ gives him a little kick. And like, what are you doing? And then Strowman, they got to pull DJ back. And DJ's all fired up because, dude, I was saving your life, man. You're about to get stampeded. Rodon comes through. O'Hearn's hot. He's pointing. And Rodon's like, you know that's not on purpose. You, you know that's not on purpose. Come on. Trevi came in. There's a shot of Trevi limping. Some people uh, requested me to include that because he just came out of the game injured. I forgot. But there he is. He comes in limping. And the coach is like, get this out of here. I don't need that. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This ump, though. Maybe my favorite brawl attendant of all time. He didn't pick up his stride. He didn't change his urgency. He goes hands behind the back like, nah, -uh, not me. I'm not getting involved here. I'll just watch you guys from the back. Actually, I'm just going to stand here. Anything good going on? Cool. Not my job. I'll just hang out. Let's pick up the papers, all right? There was no need to throw the papers. He's like, hey, I ran all the way out here, you know, you you just hold on to your papers. Boone's, what's going on? Clay's like, oh, are we good? Trevino's like, I, am, I, am I healthy now? What happening? And then I like this shot of Cole just looking on, you know, just kind of drinking in the party, watching the sunset, being like, damn, that was a good time, though. That was a little bit of a good time. I enjoyed it. Hyde's hot. Hyde's hot, and he deserves to be hot. And all the quotes in the post game, I'll throw some right here. They all said the right things, in my opinion. Uh, especially Garrett Cole. I get it. <laughs> I get wise. I get wise, man. Anybody who was out there knows it was tough to grip the baseball tonight. Um, with that said, though, the guy got hit in the head, so it's like understandable that Brandon's pissed and he's defending his players. Orioles have every right to be upset. I've been saying this on our Talking Yanks podcast for a while. Like, guys, you're hitting too many people. It's not a good look. You're hitting too many people. Don't throw it up and in. You got to let them swing the bat. Like T-Mobile is having you guys swing the bat into the future with T-Mobile, the exclusive 5G innovation partner of Major League Baseball, because what they've got going on is their frictionless entry, which is going to get you guys into the stadium faster. And it's powered by T-Mobile's 5G network. To learn more, visit T-Mobile.com slash MLB. Thank you. If you enjoy this, subscribe. And if the audio was any different, because uh, I'm at an Airbnb for the All-Star Game.